Yeah, my name's Jordan Wax, and I play uh, multi instrumentalist. I play violin, accordion, and guitar, and sing with Lone Pinon, which is a group out of Santa Fe and Albuquerque that is uh, dedicated to working with our area's regional traditions, a kind of the wide spectrum of uh, regional traditions that are at home here. But uh, and a really important part of that is the the dance repertoire that's really unique to northern New Mexico that comes from the the old bailes or fandangos before that of the the specific figure dances and the the accordion and violin repertoire that goes with that. Right. Thank you. I um, wanted to start with a specific question about um, the instrumentation of the of the ensemble because I I found I found it interesting. It um, overlaps with some ensembles that I'm familiar with, and then has some pretty stark contrasts. Um, but I think when I thought about it, I realized that it was I was comparing them to uh, ensembles that I knew from Mexican styles, and I couldn't think of anything that was distinctly New Mexican to. Uh, um, compare it to. So I wanted to ask you um, if you could just give me a little bit of history about the, um, let's see if I'm pronouncing it, Orquesta Tipica. Is that, yeah. a, am I getting that right? And sure. um, I was wondering how set of an instrumentation it is, because I saw that it was described as a string band, but then there are yeah. plenty of um, members of the group who play non-string instruments. You said yourself accordion, yeah. or even yeah. things that I, w um, or at least I myself would not immediately think of as in a new mexican band um so yeah yeah wonder on your thoughts about that sure yeah you're you're that's a really good place you bring it to in terms of like looking at other regions and how you know there tends to evolve over time like a typical accepted ensemble that that is associated with a, a particular style and i think in it's interesting in that in different regions those have different levels of um how flexible they are right. and you know like in in um the you know what became the and then they change over time too you know what became what was conjunto is now you know at time was was upright bass a bajo six though an accordion and it had to have that and right. and today like the wapango azteco in mexico it has to have a violin a jarana azteca and a wapanguera and that's it mm -hmm. um and in new mexico there was never like a you know an orthodox tradition that it became this one thing so it gives us a little more room to experiment most of the the generation that we learned from sorry about that no you're <laughs> okay <laughs> um most of the older generation that we learned from was a period where uh the basic unit is the guitar and violin which mm -hmm. can be switched out for accordion and violin mm -hmm. or i mean accordion and guitar Right. So it's a it's a melodic and an accompaniment kind of thing. And, right. Yeah, uh, and then we have some examples of like the an or orquesta típica, like the Villeros Alegres de Santa Fe, which the twin fiddle tradition was a really important part of that all the way yeah. along. Um, and we also see a lot of that in in Texas and other borderland styles from you know that until the accordion came in and kind of. Uh, uh, replaced the the violin. There was a lot of violin driven, but when possible, uh, twin fiddle uh, yeah. with harmony violins. So th that's an element that is really fun to work with in this group. And then uh, the bass or tololoche, which really came into all this region a little later, um, is is something that we've loved working with, and it it you know shows up in photos in New Mexico in, in the 30s and and 40s. Um, and yeah, the guitars have changed also over time. And, you know, whether it's a nylon string, then to, then to steel string, then back to nylon string. Um, but it, it's a little, yeah, it's a flexible uh, format that we've kind of tried to explore in a creative way. We, you know, don't feel too tied down to, to any one, one thing. Although, of course, like the, the violin and accordion is a really important um, instrumental melodic lead for the older style. And then the guitar um, is a really important melodic lead for styles that kind of come after the sixties. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, that. So, yeah. So we kind of feel like we have those elements to work with and we experiment with combining them in different ways. We don't feel too tight in that, you know, it needs to be just the violin leading or, or, right. or something. Yeah. Awesome. I think that, uh, I, it, 
brings me to another one of my questions, which is um, specifically about the kind of the goals of the band. And I I think it's really interesting when, um, as opposed to folk, um, well, folk focused bands, which are more based on preservation, which is um, amazing in its own right. Um, but from what I gather about this, the band, it seems that you guys are really connected with the um, just the drive for evolution in the styles that um, you're kind of, you know, you guys are focused on. Um, do you feel the same way about that? Do you, would you say that you guys are both looking at how to preserve the traditions of the styles, but also how they may um, continue to evolve? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really good observation. Uh, yeah, and I think it, it's been great that now we've this project has existed for close to 10 years and at different stages we've kind of been able to balance that in different ways and uh you know there have been times where we've we've had the chance to do really traditional instrumentation and arrangements which has been a great education and really great to you know be able to do that and and in general i see that as kind of like the first 20 years of my playing in a lot of traditional styles i i you know, really focused on that. How can you do it as much as possible inside the conversation that's already happening of the tradition and make sure that you, and I think at, at that phase, it's really important to make sure you're learning the language properly and uh, understand where things begin and end and where the, the boundaries between different styles and periods are. And uh, I think, yeah, it's, it's really been cool with this ensemble kind of since just before the pandemic. Um, we've been... Yeah, exactly like you say, kind of thinking of, of evolution. And and I think really the way I've approached that is by, I think it's it's really easy when you're working with a traditional style. Sorry, that's getting even <laughs> uh, Yeah, so this, I think one of the, the realizations I've had lately is just seeing, I think with traditional music, you really have a certain a musician tends to really have a certain sound and style in mind uh, when they start out. And I think that's really important for a long period of the learning process because it's really easy to stray off that. Everything in our world kind of takes us another direction. We have to be really focused. But I think what I realized is that leads you to a very product-focused uh, musical process where you're like, okay, we can... You know, the most important thing is that in the end, we have something that sounds very traditional. And I think that putting the, that product over the process that we have as a community, as musicians, as collaborators, um, I realize that's something that, in a sense, is very non-traditional. That's very much like a commodification. And that's very, I think, you know, more of an influence of how, you know, we approach music now as a commodity and how the music industry created these distinct separations. We need to like really keep everything in its box. So I, I think what we've done is really started to put the process first and understand how each musician can be contributing everything they have to contribute, which is a lot, you know, to, to make sure that it's an open conversation uh, because the, all the musicians we're working with have a lot of experience that they can and and perspective that they can share so i think the past couple of years we really have focused on on centering that process and as a result we're ending up with with the style that emerges is evolving a lot quicker and sounds different um but i'm really happy because it really includes that traditional voice to me um and includes the the continuity of all the traditions the musicians are bringing and working with. And I even see, uh, you know, I've had the really interesting experience where at times we weren't going for a certain traditional sound. And I didn't even mention it, that I had a reference in mind. Um, but through the process of working together and approaching the tune and thinking, what does it need? And, and what does it need for us to really connect with it and enjoy it? we ended up recreating something that I've heard on a recording from the thirties or something. Yeah. So, uh, so I think it's just, yeah, a shift that we've made as, as musicians, just feeling like we need to, you know, be a little more sincere and honest about that process. And as a result, I think, yeah, the, the results are a lot more varied. The, 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 
the the style that comes out is is more varied but i'm really happy with kind of the relationship that it has to the tradition even though it's not as recreationist as as i've done in the past right (laughs) <laughs> awesome. I think that, okay, I think that leads me into the last thing that I wanted to ask about, um, specifically because in during the process of that, you uh, talked about continuity and you talked mm-hmm. about the um, um, the way that you kind of like immerse yourself within the traditional style, but with the intense study and, um, but especially contact with um, with the actual musicians who are making the music and um that interaction with them yeah all over the website that it says like elder musicians and i like yeah. that um yeah. i like I, I i love that idea of the of the band of or just that image of you all as repositories of um information that you got from your teachers and so i was wondering if you guys start to see yourself as taking on that role in any of your educational outreach programs and it have you felt any of that kind of shift um towards yeah, more that, of an educational role yeah that's that's a really interesting question i think since since the beginning of the project we've we've you know wanted to explore as much as possible um how we can share the music and i never i think it's it's you know, a constant challenge of a traditional music musician today. You have to constantly, uh, people, you know, a lot of people haven't had the chance to to experience how community-based traditional music is and what it means that these things have been passed down. And I think we, you know, tend to see, oh, if someone's playing something, that must be their thing and their song they made or their property or associated with them. And so I think we've always tried to, to, bring that into the conversation and say, no, we're just, you know, the people who are playing this in this moment, but, you know, it's, it's been played a lot before us and we've, we're just a part of that. And hopefully, you know, in, in a robust tradition, healthy tradition, it's being played in a myriad of forms at any one moment or being thought of in different ways in any one moment. Um, and that's, that's a challenge with this tradition because so few people play it. And then of the people who play it so many, so few people play it publicly or, or, you know, make a integrate it into the kind of, uh, you know, arts world that we have now that we have an opportunity to play in. So, so, uh, it's, it's, a yeah, it's just a constant, uh, part of the process to bring those two things together. And, and we, yeah, want to make, I think kind of the almost educational, aspect of it is how we think of you know sharing it and informing and, and hopefully inspiring people to get involved and um you know we've tried doing workshops uh, particularly with the dance traditions to get people involved because something that's so accessible anyone can learn uh and we've done some instrumental workshops and uh you know tried to provide the music to whoever's interested in it and it's cool seeing there there are you know a few people who have who have uh have picked that up but I think in general, you know, it's hard for our generation, I think, that, you know, I think we're, I see myself as being really lucky to, you know, have kind of come of age as a musician in a time where I had a chance to learn from people who had a really different musical experience growing up than me uh, and a really different lifestyle, you know. I got to learn from a lot of people who played in a community context where that regional style was the vernacular of their region. And that's what music was. It wasn't a self-conscious decision. It wasn't an artistic decision. It wasn't about identity. It was like, if you're going to play music, this is, this is it. And, and there's a kind of, uh, you know, mother language, you know, mother tongue um, that those musicians have that I think a person in our generation can't really um can't really have that so i think well you know it's been great i think with social media one of the things we've tried to do is what we can to center the voices of those elders that we have and share their music because you know we don't have any any uh illusions that we can continue offering what they offer right. you know like because the world is just certain... different now you can't yeah you can't yeah, develop that's... that exact kind of situation yeah yeah and and i think yeah it's 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 a you know a com- complicated relationship to continuity where i feel like you know what we have to do is 
is, you know, learn as much as we can and then really try to, um, to be as authentic as we can as musicians about that and how that fits in our lives. Mm-hmm. Because at this point, it's, I think it's that question becomes more important is like, is there a way this can continue as a meaningful part of people's lives? Um, and, and I think I was, you know, for very many years of the process, you know, very consumed about how it's done. And, um, and I think that's still really important, but I think that if question, it, it gets a little farther out and it, it is even more important to figure out well, how, how can you really relate to this so authentically that other people will pick it up and, and not as like a really niche specialized thing that only another person who's obsessed with traditional music could, could relate right. to. <laughs> um, so, so I think, yeah, I think a lot about what we're doing as, as part of that. Um, and, and really hope that, you know, I mean, it's the, the most meaningful thing would be if, if, you know, future generations could, we'll have a chance to connect with this uh, um, and that our work could connect them back to the other resources that, that are available. And, and, you know, because culture is such a complicated context, it could, you know, it can only sometimes even one link of music can connect a person to a whole cultural context that's around them. And um, we're not the ones who are actually providing the meat of that, but it might just be the vessel that then connects them to their elders and, and all this cultural environment that's so rich and there is so much um, to, to learn from. So I think it kind of remains to be seen what role our generation will play in that. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's as simple as, you know, what the way it was in the past was just like passing this the the techniques on and that kind of fulfilled that role i feel like um we're getting a little farther away from the moment where you know just like the spanish language you know where where people learned it as a, a native tongue in you know the new mexico dialect and that it just went without saying and it was just a means of communication and and we're getting into a whole different relationship uh with that but i i hope that it um as complicated and and weird as it is these days um i hope that it fulfills the same role of of being able to connect people to the you know the whole yeah uh legacy of ancestry and all the all the complex cultural uh information that's part of that yeah just could, to try to give the spark for that for yeah. anyone who you yeah. come in contact with. I think that's great. Yeah. yeah. And realizing that what, what you have is just a very small spark and it's, it's a very specific way of connecting, but, but, you know, certainly for me that that's meant a huge amount in my life. And, and, and we do, you know, once in a while meet, meet people who have been inspired to learn or even kids. I met a, a nine-year-old uh, today who I'm going to be working with on the violin who, you know, her parents came to hear us before she was born and grew up hearing, <laughs> hearing this music as a result. And, and I feel like, wow, that, that's awesome. That's interesting, <laughs> yeah. That's a really interesting, that's an impact. Uh, that's, that's an cool. impact. Yeah. And it just takes a really long time to see them. So yeah, exactly. But it's, it's really, yeah. really good to see the, those payoffs. That's yeah. really, that's really cool to hear. Yeah. Yeah. 